to another episode of Rugby League Outlaws brought to you by Punctured Media, Zero Fox Clothing and Top Sports Betting. Dan, we're here to talk. Rugby League, Terry! Of course we are. This off-season is going so fast and there is so much news. Mate, and to start off with the news, what better way than Brandon Smith making a complete jack mm-hmm. of himself? Now look, I want to throw this one out to Twitter where 95% of our views come from. Yep. They're all saying that, oh, he's just being a character. Mm-hmm. There's a difference between being a character and mm-hmm. sitting in an interview and saying, can't win to, wait to win a premiership with another club. Yeah, I looked at that jersey and thought I could really win a premiership in that jersey. He's talking about, you know, past legends. He said past legend, then he said Mitch Orbison uh, was crying when he was telling the story of the Roosters. The only reason why he was crying is because they paid all of to do nothing in his whole life. <laughs> oh, that deal. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what this does do now is it takes Brandon Smith off the market. It certainly does. And it has severe ramifications for a club we'll talk about afterwards. Mm-hmm. And it's not the Melbourne Storm. But what it does do now is it puts the number nine merry-go-round in full circle. Absolutely does. Now, for me, being that Reid Marnie is all but signed for the Bulldogs, we're expecting an announcement. Yeah, we're expecting an announcement shortly. Happy Coruscant possibly becomes the most valuable player on the market. In terms of how many other number nines are out there? Correct. All the other number nines are vaccinated, though, and that's the big thing for Api Coruscant. Before he can even play a game again, and if he does get the vaccination, then obviously you think Penrith are going to be in the box seat for signing. That's true. Who else is out there, though? Sam Verrills comes into play. Sam Verrills. Well, you've got Finu from Manly. Yeah. His case is going to trial very soon. We may or may not know. I don't. I haven't read up on it, to be totally honest. Mm-hmm. I just thought of that real quick. Yeah. He's a superstar in the making. We've seen big players moved on to accommodate him. Coruscant, in fact, coincidentally. So he's there if available. Yeah, you'd have to think, though, that with Manly showing the loyalty to him, he yes. may stay. But obviously, as well as you said, he's a superstar in the making. The money is coming off. Blake Braden? Well, there's a big name. Although... There is some news coming on Blake Braden later. We may have to break some news. I mean, will... Will a team take a punt on James Seguiara? It's 30 years old. Look, they might have to because the nine stops are way down. When you're taking Sam Verrills is the second Wade Egan. best. I mean, don't get me wrong. Verrills is not a terrible player. No, he's not. Stretch. Not a superstar. And, you know, you're looking at the the likes of the Titans that are one number nine away from the title. I think it's fair to say Verrills probably isn't that player. Yeah, and now this also brings into play for someone like Josh Hodgson to not ruin the rest of his career by signing with the Tigers. He's got to wait 12 months. Yeah, he's just got to, he's got to wait a couple of weeks to figure out what's going on. He can probably get that Parramatta cash. Look, he certainly can. Or he can get the, the Titans cash. Well, they don't no, have to go to the Tigers. Let, let's talk about the Dolphins. They need a number nine and about 30 other things. Yeah. But they've got a blank checkbook to make a silly decision, and it's coming, mm-hmm. a big money decision on a player that doesn't justify it. Hodgson's got some decent pedigree. He might say to them, I'm worth 800 k and Bennett's in a panic and said, yes, you are. I don't think Bennett will panic on Josh Hodgson. Mm, I don't, me, me neither. But I, I think I think Bennett could make a play for Coruscant because he's coached him before. That's true. I Look, Abby's two, two shots away from being potentially an 800 k player. Exactly right. Now, before we move on to the next bit, Justin Manu has also re-signed with the Roosters. I couldn't be happier about that. Yeah, big, big fan of Manu sitting to my left. Nope, absolutely not. Uh, Felice Kafusi has become the first big-name signing for the Dolphins. Now, we said that there were severe ramifications for a club of Brendan Smith not choosing them. It is the Dolphins. It's he awesome. was the player that they had to get. He was the one they went all in, in for, and they thought they had him. Yeah. All reports were they were getting ready. The social media team had the videos ready to go. And he said, no, thank you. In terms of Kafusi, now look, I, I'm a bit of a flip-flopper on this. In terms of a name, it's a good name. It's a, yeah, it's a decent signing. But he's going to be the wrong side of 30. He has his issues on the field. He has his issues staying on the field, not being sent to the sim bin just quietly. It's not going to do them damage. No, it's not. He's he's from up that way. He's an origin player. He'll still be an origin player when he gets there. Absolutely. And Wayne Bennett will make sure he stays in that origin team. As far as first signings go... I, I think it's okay. It, oh, it's a bludger because they wanted a big name. They wanted, they want, they wanted Smith. Yeah. They want Ponga. But 
if they sign Ponga, no one's going to remember who the first signing was. They're just going to remember the Their first signing. signing was actually an Australian schoolboys player who's on a development deal with the Broncos. <laughs> I can't remember the kid's name. No, he can sign for the Bronx and stay there. And it yeah. Definitely does the job. So this is their first real yeah, sign. Yeah, this is the first real sign. They got signing. to send a, a, um, an official statement, a yeah. real release. Put on and it. it was a nice video as well for the Dolphins. Yeah. Um, now, going back to Brendan Smith, Melbourne Storm, do you think they have every right to be pissed at him? Absolutely. I would be. And if Craig Bellamy says, you've offended me to the point I'm willing to let you go, yeah. knowing that Smith's a pretty handy player, what does that say? We wouldn't be having that conversation if they didn't have Harry Grant. Though. Uh, look, no. And yeah. for me, Harry Grant's where the future lies. Yeah. If Brandon Smith wants to go to the Roosters, I don't, they can't afford him next year. No. Does he go and do a pinch hit year at the Titans for big money or... It's not it's a bad shout. It's not a, not a bad shout water, uh, whatsoever. Now, our spies have uh, seen a pretty handy player at South Facilities. Who is it? Dare I say a former Dow member? Yeah, of the year. it is. Jack Whiten. Jack Whiten has been spotted touring oh, South. South. Sydney, that could set some cats in my city. It is. Now, only a couple, I've searched this on Twitter and a couple of people have mentioned it saying, mm-hmm. hey, What's this news about Jack White and the South? Our spy story in there. Look, whatever may be, may be. Maybe. South Sydney, well, they need a half. Yeah. But I think Young Taff is the future. But in terms of six, Cody Walker at seven, could yeah. be right back it's, in the premiership race. Too. It's not bad. Now, Parramatta. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Clubs in crisis. All their big name players off seem to be leaving, but they kept the king. They kept the king. Does this remind you of another Western Suburbs team that had four players to sign, went all in on one and lost the better three? I was just about to say to you, this is massive West Tigers vibe. Certainly is. When their big four were off contract. Uh, one to go, big Joe, big Joey Paulo. Yeah, and and he's doing the he's doing the Brandon Smith now. He's touring every team. He certainly is, as he should. And there are 15 teams that need Junior Polo. There are. He's a fantastic player. He walk into the majority of them. He walks through the majority. Yeah, of them. I think Parramatta may have got this one right. Did you see that come out? They made a pact that they'll win the Premiership next year. Good for Parramatta. <laughs> <laughs> and someone chased the Tigers over Parramatta. Can we just... That's terrible. Uh, it is terrible. Mitchell Pearce has uh, been given his release to go to Catalans and his best mate Dylan Napa has followed him. A little, and bit, a little bit of shadow boxing over there. And now some rumours that uh, stand-up guy, all-round character, good bloke, Tyron May, could be heading to Catalans for a year. The Catalan good guys, indeed. Well, whatever. Uh, yeah, I got, I got the time for Luciano Leilua has officially signed for the Cowboys in what can only be said as ridiculous overs. Yeah, 400? 450k? It's about 800. For Luciano Leilua. Yeah. They're paying the centre a million dollars. And they've got Chad Townsend on 800. 800. And Tom Alolo is playing like 40 minutes on a mill. Yeah. One of the things the Cowboys did not need was another edge back roll that can't tackle. But <laughs> here we are. They got one. Wow. Um, they did offer up Reese Robson to the Tigers uh, in, a, in a bid to get Leilua this year. And look, the Tigers have rightly said no. They've already got two average hookers. They don't need a third one. Well, look, they're, unless they're collecting them, yeah. yeah. But look, Leilua's not. The Cowboys can finish last. Oh, I'm just. Yeah. Them and the Dragons. Leilua's not going to help that. What's Payton doing? He's trying to get sacked. I don't, know, I don't know how you can look at that team and just think how bad they were on the edges. And go, you know what? We'll fix that. Luchin <laughs> and average player on 800. They might as well just sign his brother. No, Speaking of, he's going to Featherston. What will we know, mate? Yeah. What we know? Uh, and Dan, I am really glad this off-season that the NRL decided to get rid of their digital content space yep. for NRL Online. Aren't they hitting some bangers this week? Absolutely. Breaking. Ryan Pappenhausen's hair is still good. Does eat a pie. If you want some real news in, in the rugby league world, stick with us. Favourite time of the week, Terry? Time to talk some black, white, and blue. Oh. Any, any news? Any potential breaking news? There is potential breaking news happening. Oh. Yeah, sources close to you and I have all but confirmed Blake Braley has agreed to a new three-year deal with the Sharks. Fantastic news. I am really, really excited to see what Young Brails brings out this year in a forward pack that doesn't require him to make 45 tackles. Mm-hmm. 
a halfback that will not overrule him at every opportunity and a coach who knows what he's doing. Yeah, and the one thing that I'm most excited for this as well is it takes us out of that number nine merry-go-round. It certainly does. I don't want to be paying overs for Wade Egan. Mm. Plus, don't forget, for the first time in, well, since his brother left, Young Browse has plenty of competition. He has to earn the spot. He, yeah, you're absolutely right there. He has to earn the spot. We brought in a good backup. Connor Tracy's also there as well. Absolutely. Braden Trindle can go in the nine if we need. And Cam Kinnis. Spot on. There's plenty of names there. I think it's a good signing. Yeah. Shows um, Sir Fitz, a great man. Yeah, he's has committed. total confidence in Young Browse, as do I. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm hit and miss on Blake Bradley at the moment because I think he's got so much potential that he hasn't brought out, but this is now giving him three years. In, in 18 months' time, if he's still playing as he is, he won't be in our team. No, absolutely right. Yeah. So Fitz will not take that no. at all. But, um, oh, mate, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. I, I think it's fantastic. No, no, it's just things like this that, you know, the atmosphere at the club right now, it's just as great as it's been. Look, we've been talking about it we've for, been, for weeks. Everyone's been talking about it. All the content's coming out. But we went out and got someone better to talk about We that. certainly, someone on the ground, our good mate and good friend of the show, Gaz, who is in everything at the moment. Yeah, good day, boys. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it's good to be back here at Points Square Stadium chatting to you fellas. So, Gaz, how is the atmosphere at the club? Yeah, the atmosphere is great, boys. As you mentioned, Sir Fitz has arrived, Pricey's back, DJ, uh, Josh Hannay, all those guys are there. And um, there's just a genuine buzz around the group and everyone's looking forward to next year. Obviously, we're not getting ahead of ourselves. But um, yeah, there's just a genuine excitement around the group and um, everyone sort of knows it's a new era ahead and we're looking forward to it as soon as the season kicks off. Nico Hines, was that the greatest photo shoot of all time? Oh, boys, that was without a doubt the greatest photo shoot of all time. You saw everyone losing their minds on social media. And um, Nico's just a good bloke, you know. You can tell he's got that chat around training. He's got that professionalism and that work ethic. And you can really see he wants to, you know, grab this opportunity and really lead the team as best he can. Gaz, Gaz, Gaz. Nico. Nico. Uh, Gaz, when can we expect to see Dale Finucan in Sharks colours? Yeah, Dale's due to start here early December, so um, stay tuned. We might have to do another photo shoot with another uh, good-looking shark. Back to Shark Park this year. Mate, how important is it that everyone gets their memberships, as we have, mm -hmm. and sports the boys back at home? Good Josington didn't get one. It's so important to have you guys back here. Obviously, two years away at Net Strata was, you know, all right, but it's not home, and here we are ready to go next year. And, you know, you guys out there are crucial to, crucial to the success of the team, so... um. Make sure you get to the games. Make sure you sign up as a member if you haven't already and um, get this place rocking because it definitely contributes to the success of the team. Any young guns standing out at the moment for you guys? Ooh, speaking of guns, Ken McInnes, best physique ever. Oh, mate, all of the young boys really rip in this time of year. It's good to see, you know, there's plenty of healthy competition and um, all those boys are trying to grab those last couple of spots in the squad before they either go back and play the Jets or they move on. So, um Look, for me, the probably standout is uh, Tommy Hazelton. You guys have seen him play. He um, was there or thereabouts last year, so I thought he would have got a crack and gone up to Queensland, but unfortunately he didn't. But uh, keep an eye on him this year, and if you uh, don't see him in Sharks colours, make sure you get out there and watch him at the Newtown Jets games because he's, uh, he's a real old-school sort of player for a young fella. He um, runs real hard and straight as a prop, and he's a big lump of a bloke. He's real hard to tackle. So, um, yeah, Tommy Hazelton's probably the one, but Cam McInnes, as you mentioned, dead set. That bloke is intense. Just his intensity around training is just next level. I've never seen anything like it. And um, I'm really excited to see how that translates across to the rest of the group and um, once the season rolls around. So looking forward to that one. Thanks for dropping in, guys. We really appreciate it. Mate, thanks so much. How about that? That backdrop. How about the man standing in front of the backdrop? Makes us look slightly more age. Yeah, thanks for having me, boys. Always good to chat to you both and uh, we'll see you soon. Oh, Gary, talk to me, Dan. Time for some top sport tips. How'd you go last week? One from two. Not bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I, I got the uh, Golden State Warriors to cover, and if you put the Steph Curry five threes in it, it was a very prosperous day. It's not great either. Uh, it's you know fifty percent better than zero percent. Well, two from two over uh, here, including a huge underdog in the uh, you the do? Yeah, I know. I thought them. How Cowboys, about them Cowboys? I thought the Cowboys were going to come good. That was a cracking game. Great game. You called it to be the game of the day. It didn't great disappoint game. us. Brilliant. Fantastic. I'm just, I'm on a roll. I'm just sick with the NFL this week too. Absolutely. You do that. Because you're one ahead right now. You, so what do you got for us? Well, look, this Thursday, it was only one game, so I picked it. The Cowboys are back against the Saints. 
Surely Dem Cowboys beat the Saints. Look, yes, yeah. I believe they will. The Saints are on a slide. They are just not the team they were when they beat the Bucks a couple of a month and a half ago. Yeah. The Cowboys are due because yeah. they've been pretty terrible. Yeah, Dak Prescott will tear them apart. Look, they will. I'm going to tip them. Whatever the line is, take it. I think the Cowboys finally win a game of football. Mm. And what's your second second ever? This is a great game. My second is the game. Look, we're going to jump ahead to Monday week. Mm. The Bills... Host the Patriots. Mac Daddy is bringing the Patriots to town. I'm sorry, Bills Mafia, but it's over for you. Is it fair to say the uh, the winner of this game wins the division? No. Okay. Because in two weeks they play each other again. Whoever edges the series yeah. gets goes ahead on the decider. It's like a half game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so whoever edges this series, yes, absolutely. So four and against comes into play on this. It does because it, it's a head-to-head. Look, I think the Pats beat the Bills mm-hmm. as big underdogs and then Foxborough will kill them in a couple of weeks. But Mac Jones has turned into it. Lucky you and I backed him from the Never start. Never said a bad word. Never said a bad word about Mac Daddy, our Lord and Saviour. <laughs> Dan, I'm going to stick with the NBA because it's what I know. It's what I know best. Uh, as I said, you know, I thought Utah would be able to beat the Pelicans, but uh, I'm going to pick the Nets to beat the Timberwolves on Saturday our time, Friday in America. And I'm also going to pick the Nets the next day to beat the Bulls. And if you want to get fancy, multi it. The double, the net, net the, double. The Nets double. They're going to go back to back. But they've been... They've been okay in their back-to-back games this year, but you've got a two-game homestand in Brooklyn in the Barclays Centre, and it's against two teams Yeah, coming into town. The Timberwolves are, are in the top eight for the Western Conference, playing some really good basketball at the moment, and the Bulls are one of the most exciting teams to watch. So I think the Nets are two games they're going to come out with. Fair call. I just want to say net-net double again. Net-net double. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Rugby League Outlaws brought to you by Punctured Media. Top Sports, our friend Zero Fox, please make sure that you like and subscribe. Follow us everywhere you can. Trash Dan and I in the comments. We love it. We absolutely love it. I thrive on it. We do. We thrive on this. Uh, and Dan? How long the Rugby League? Three and a half months. That sucks. Yeah, it does. Oh, yeah.